Hi, welcome back. Today we will be discussing capital budgeting decisions. So before we get into detail of this topic, let us quickly uh, do a brief recap as to where do we stand when it comes to the topic and uh, where do we stand in the syllabus. So capital budgeting decisions is a part of financial management and uh, we have already discussed in the preceding classes what financial management is, what is finance, what are the functional areas of financial management and what are the roles and responsibilities of finance department. So this is what we have discussed so far. And we have also discussed another important aspect that is uh, financing decisions. So what exactly do we study in financial management is what we are about to discuss now. So if you could recall the definition of financial management, financial management is a process of raising funds, administrating funds, allocating funds, controlling funds with an objective of maximizing the profits. And it can also be to maximize the wealth of the shareholders. So the end result of the entire process involved in financial management that is raising funds, allocating funds, administrating funds and controlling of funds should result in achievement of these two broader objectives of financial management that is wealth maximization and profit maximization. So if you could split this definition what we just discussed, this can be categorized into four broader areas which is also known as scope of financial management. And one of the aspects, as I mentioned, we have already discussed that is financing decisions. So these are the four broader areas of financial management, which a student has to study whenever uh, he undertakes financial management course. So let us briefly discuss now what do these four areas uh, deals with. So financing decision is something which we have already discussed. So if you could recall, what did we do in financing decision? Point number one, in financing decision, the first step is to identify the fund requirements of the organization. The second step is to figure out where do we get those funds from. For instance, if you need 10 crores to do your business, which you have planned up, so the important question that needs to be asked is where do you get that money from. So the second step in financing decision is to identify different sources of funds. The third important aspect of financing decision is to evaluate as to which is the best source of funding, the source of funding that would help the organization to achieve its objectives. And the fourth step is to construct the uh, capital structure. Capital structure is nothing but composition of capital. In other words, capital structure means different sources of long-term funds used in the capital of the company. So one important point that should be noted down here that capital primarily comprises of long-term sources of funds. So when we see what exactly long-term means, so long-term here means there are two dimensions. One, either it means more than one year or sometimes it can be infinite. That means there is no duration of repayment. Right. So this is what financing decisions deals with and capital budgeting is a part of investment decisions which we shall discuss in today's class. The other areas that you have to study under financial management includes dividend decisions and also working capital management. So let us see what exactly do you study in all these areas. So let us classify this four areas and uh, these four areas can be better explained in these three parameters, right? So decision type, scope and key consideration. So in financing decision, what do we study? The answer is in financing decision, we primarily study how do we get the funds. After procuring these funds, what do we do with these funds? These funds definitely are not kept idle. They are employed for the sake of doing business and where do we employ them? The answer is we employ them in procuring fixed assets. In other words, the funds procured should be invested in fixed assets and these assets would help the organization to do business and to generate 
revenue. And once the revenue is generated after investing in all the assets, what do you want to do with that revenue? Would you like to give it back to the shareholders? Or would you like to give some part of the profit to the shareholder and keep some money for further investments? Or would you like to completely reinvest the revenue generated in new investment avenues? Or would you like to do a combination of all? Or would you like to just keep it as it is? So this is what you have to decide in this segment called dividend decisions. So in dividend decisions, we primarily evaluate as to what do we do with the profits, right? The profit which is generated after investment, what needs to be done with those profits, whether they should be reinvested or whether they should be given back to the shareholders or a combination of these two is something what we study in dividend decisions. And the last area of financial management is working capital management. Now working capital management, uh, you're already aware of the basics. Working capital primarily deals with uh, fulfilling the continuous uh, fund requirement, fund which is required to manage the day-to-day -day operations of the business. So working capital management primarily deals with managing of current assets and current liabilities. So the objective of managing current assets and current liabilities is to ensure liquidity. At any point in time, the business should not face shortage of cash. So you should ensure that you have sufficient cash to meet the requirement of the business and also to meet opportunities that may arise. Right. So ensuring sufficient cash is always available will help the business to manage its liquidity and also to capitalize on any investment opportunity that may arise. So liquidity decision primarily deals with management of current assets and current liabilities with an objective of ensuring adequate liquidity. So these are the key considerations. At the time of borrowing funds, what are the two important factors that needs to be considered? Which is the best source of fund? How do you evaluate which is the best source? The answer is the evaluation criteria is cost and the other criteria is risk. So any source of fund, any source of fund which has minimum cost and minimum risk, any source of fund that has optimum cost and optimum risk is considered to be the best source of fund and this is also known as optimal capital structure. So optimal capital structure means a capital structure whose cost and risk is optimum or minimum. At the time of investing funds, what are the two evaluation criteria? So the answer is risk and return. So whenever we do invest, whenever we employ funds in various assets, we have to always evaluate what would be the risk of doing it and also what is the profitability aspect. Right? So this is what we would be studying in this chapter and in the coming chapter as to how to evaluate risk and return at the time of undertaking investment decisions. And in case of dividend decisions, as I mentioned earlier, you have to always take into account various factors like requirement of the shareholders and what are your future plans. Right? Because if you have future investment plans, you need again sources of fund and your accumulated profit can also be a source of fund. Right? Of course, there are many other factors like liquidity factor, prevailing economic conditions. So there are so many other factors that uh, so many other factors that needs to be considered at the time of dividend decisions also. Anyways, we are not studying dividend decisions now, but when we discuss dividend decisions, we will have a separate topic called factors influencing dividend decisions. At that time, probably we can have an elaborate discussion on dividend decision. And of course, the last one is liquidity decision. And in liquidity, uh, liquidity decisions, we have to primarily consider availability of cash, that is liquidity and also profitability. So sometimes what happens in an organization to be a little more optimistic may keep a lot of cash reserves to meet any kind of contingency. That is also not advisable because you can't keep cash idle. You have to ensure that that idle cash also generates some sort of revenue, which is also known as profitability. So identifying the optimal cash balance is one of the challenging tasks 
and another important decision that needs to be uh, taken as a part of working capital management in fact cash management is a very elaborate topic which we will discuss at the time of discussing working capital now so for now you people should be able to understand what is financial management so financial management is concerned with these four areas right financial management deals with taking relevant decisions right taking decisions pertaining to financing investment dividend and working capital management and how do these decisions are taken these decisions are taken by keeping into mind these factors which we have discussed which is given here in the last column key consideration so now let us move on and uh, slightly deviate our focus on capital budgeting so before defining what capital budgeting is right let me give you some perspective by giving you a business idea and this is something which you are familiar with because i am quite sure most of you right are eagerly waiting for your graduation day a day on which you complete your entire graduation and generally in most of the institutions graduation day is an important event an event which is uh, celebrated it is an auspicious occasion for some right so usually students wear special graduation dress right they take pictures they share it on social media right another important highlight of graduation day is the boring part in which you get a lot of uh, messages from different guests and of course your principal also right so generally the graduation day one important highlight of this graduation day is wearing that graduation dress so who gives this graduation dress should you buy on your own or is it supplied by the college in most of the cases the graduation dress is given by the college but the question here is do you think the college owns this graduation uh, dress the answer is no generally the contract is given to a supplier or a vendor who supplies it to all the students on the day of graduation and the college collects a nominal sum of money and gives it back to the supplier does the college have any uh, benefit in this uh, deal between the supplier and you the answer is yes some colleges do keep some sort of commission right so some profitability is something which the college may also think of so my question to you is assume that you are the finance officer of the college and you have to take an important decision and what is this decision should we uh, rent graduation gowns or should we buy them which is a uh, better from the point of generating revenue to the organization so let us say if we rent a graduation dress we may do it at the cost of 200 rupees per dress but we may ask the student to pay 300 rupees so in this process the college ends up making a profit of 100 rupees per graduation dress which is uh, a decent amount of money considering the fact that we have so many students who get uh, graduated right who graduate every year from the college so that is option number 1 option number 2 is to buy those graduation dresses and probably make it a right good source of uh, revenue right so in order to come to a conclusion which is better whether it is renting or whether it is buying we have to do some calculation right so let us do that calculation and find out which is a better option so now the question that arises is how many units of dresses should we buy so here in our example we have taken 1000 units right so that's the average amount of students that graduate each year from a college a college like yours may have more than this right only in commerce alone you may have 1000 plus students excluding all the students from arts and humanities but let us uh, have 1000 as a standard number right and this number can be flexible if you want to increase the number you can do so but in our example we have just taken 1000 as the number right so what is the cost of graduation dress as you can see in this image on the slide graduation dress has different components one is the cap which is also known as mortar board and then you also have the gown then you have the robe right so there are different elements so what would be the cost so in case if we directly get it from the manufacturer probably we can work out the price right and get it as uh, less as possible so in our example we have taken the cost of each 
dress as 500 rupees so in case if we buy what is the investment that the college needs so the answer is we need 5 lakh rupees so 5 lakh rupees is the amount of investment what we have to do so after investing this right how much should we charge to the students what should be the uh, amount of fee that needs to be collected per student is something what you people have to identify so that is the second element so in case if we say okay let's not charge very high let's charge little nominal to the students even if we keep per student 200 rupees how much revenue would we end up generating per year so the answer is 2 lakh rupees right so 2 lakh rupees would be our revenue in order to earn this 2 lakh rupees would there be any expense so in our example we have considered some expense considering the fact that the uniform uh, graduation dress has to be uh, maintained right every year it has to be uh, clean it has to be sent to a laundry and there's a maintenance cost and there should be one person to take care of all this right so we are considering some expenses would be there so what would be our expense so the answer is we have uh, taken 20000 per annum as an expense so after deducting this 20000 our annual revenue would become 1 lakh 80000 rupees right so in finance language or in the language of capital budgeting the amount what we have invested is called cash outflow and the revenue what we are generating from that investment periodically that is called cash inflow so the calculation here is simple so i hope you have understood the picture here now another important thing that needs to be answered is that every investment has a life for example if you are buying a car for your transport company what would be the life of a car how lo how long will it last you may say 20 years 15 years since it is for transport you know the wear and tear would be very high so probably we can estimate the life of the vehicle to be around 10 years right after which it needs to be replaced right so here also just similar to a car we need to estimate a life so what would be the life of this graduation dress so let us say the life of this graduation dress let us keep it as 7 years right so what would be the lifetime revenue of this uh, investment right so that is what we have calculated here on the screen so 1 lakh 80000 per annum into economic life of the asset so this is the revenue what we would be generating throughout the life of the investment proposal that is 12 lakh 60000 right so does it sounds a good deal by investing 5 lakh rupees you are generating 12 lakh 60000 so if you have to mathematically express this in the form of a percentage which we generally refer as return on investment how much would that be right by employing 5 lakh rupees you are generating a profit of 12 lakh 60000 so how much would that be in terms of percentage so the answer is 252% right so you are generating a revenue which is 250 252 times than what you have uh, invested which is great right so 252% is a huge uh, i would say a ratio which i don't think so any bank would give you such a huge amount of interest if you keep this 5 lakh rupees in a bank account for a period of 7 years i am quite sure you wouldn't get even at the rate of 10% also maximum how much you get you may end up getting maximum uh, 50000 into 7 years so 50000 into 7 years you might end up getting 3 lakh 50000 right so this is a very huge amount of profit so you have to take a call now that would you like to accept this investment proposal or would you want to reject so the entire process what we have gone through on the slide is called investment decision right and the calculation part which we have done is called as capital budgeting so whatever we have discussed in this slide let us put it across in the form of definition so what is an investment decision so first let us see what is an investment so investment is a process of investing money in financial or real assets and why are we doing this the answer is to obtain the desired result and most importantly to generate profit for the organization right so here if you see there are two types of 
assets which are being highlighted in this uh, definition first either you have to invest in financial or in real assets right so what is an investment decision because there are two aspects one is investment the second one is investment decision so when we say uh, investment investment is a process of deciding as to where you want to invest the money whether it is in a financial asset or real asset and why are you doing this obviously to make profit so financial assets are in the form of document documentary claims right so financial assets includes your shares bonds debentures mutual funds derivatives where are real assets or physical assets like gold right real estate these are examples of real assets so in financing uh, sorry in investment decisions what do we do in investment decision we apply the funds right we channelize the funds which we have procured in long term assets right so here an important point that needs to be noted that investment decision primarily deals with long term assets and not short term assets so in investment decisions you basically have to decide whether you want to invest or whether you don't want to invest in long term assets and how do you decide you obviously decide this on the basis of profitability and you also decide this on the basis of what are the future benefits derived by investing the money in the long term assets so investment decision primarily deals with channelizing the funds in long term assets with an objective of maximizing the revenue and obviously to derive maximum benefits for the organization right so this is the uh, i would say a kind of a flow chart that would help you to understand the concept and this flow chart is not to define investment decisions this flow chart is to tell you what exactly capital budgeting is right so what exactly capital budgeting is the answer is this so capital budgeting is this illustration what we did so what have we done in this illustration basically we have done some mathematical calculation and what is the end result of this mathematical calculation the end result of this mathematical calculation was to figure out whether this investment decision is profitable or not right is it profitable or not the answer is yes it is profitable because by investing 5 lakh rupees we are getting almost two almost 2.5 times of what we have invested right so this concept is called capital budgeting so in simple words capital budgeting is nothing but an assessment in which we try to figure out what is the return another aspect the other dimension the other side of the return is what is the risk and this is precisely what is mentioned in this chart that investments are subject to risk and return using capital budgeting we try to identify what is the return and what is the risk associated with an investment proposal now you might be wondering that in the previous illustration what we have done is only the one aspect we have calculated only the return part and what is that return it's there on the screen 12,60,000 12,62,000 in terms of percentage it is 252% but have we calculated what are the risk factors in this investment the answer is no we didn't bother to calculate risk in this example right so just to tell you briefly what what are the risk factors risk factor number 1 we may have another new virus coming up in the future i hope it doesn't happens like the way we have corona virus now and if that happens what will happen graduation day gets cancelled you don't get to have graduation day so what will happen to our uh, cash inflow cash inflow does not arises there so that is a risk factor risk means the uncertainty right so that is a risk factor risk factor number 2 an important risk factor which we have not taken into account since this 12 lakh 60000 we are going to receive in the future right we are not receiving right now we are receiving this 12 lakh 60000 over a period of time so what would happen to this 12 lakh 62000 is simple this 12 lakh 62000 may lose its value in the future right so if you have 5 lakh rupees there is a possibility that you might end up buying an alto car now but would you be able to buy alto car with this 5 lakh rupees after 7 years the answer is no and the reason why it is no is because on account of inflation what happens the value of money 
declines. So mm-hmm. what is that we have not done here is that we have not taken into account value of money. Right, so we have ignored the value of money. The twelve, this twelve lakh sixty two, this twelve lakh sixty thousand, which we are receiving at the end of seven years, right? Its value might actual value might not be twelve lakh sixty thousand. The value might be less in terms of uh, inflation, right? Because of inflation, its value may be less, right? You may not have the same purchasing power with this twelve lakh sixty thousand what you have now after. Seven years. So that is also something which we have not taken into account. So like this, there are various risk factors that needs to be assessed. So in our example, we have not done any assessment of risk. What we have done is only the assessment of return. So investment decisions, right, is nothing but investing your money in long term assets by doing an assessment of risk and return. So doing the assessment of this risk and return is termed as capital. budgeting so capital budgeting is a financial tool which is primarily used to evaluate long term projects right so while we try to evaluate this long term investment what are the two important aspects which we have to keep into mind risk and return and that is what we were discussing when we were discussing uh, scope of financial management right if you could see here what is mentioned here the point mentioned here is very clear we are taking into account risk and return and this is what precisely we have done right so i'm sure that by now you are in a better position to understand what exactly capital budgeting is so capital budgeting is a process of assessing risk and return associated with an investment proposal right so i hope you guys are clear and you don't have any sort of confusion as far as what capital budgeting is So, what are some of the important features of capital budgeting? So, first feature is that capital budgeting deals with only investment in capital expenditure, right? So, now what is this capital expenditure? Well, I don't have to explain to you guys because you guys are already aware. You have already studied in your accounts. What is the difference between revenue expenditure and capital expenditure so if you could recall what do we record in profit and loss account we record in the income statement only the revenue incomes and revenue expenses so in other words we do capital budgeting only for capital expenditure we don't do capital budgeting for revenue expenditure right so for this you have to first be in a position to uh know what is the difference between capital budgeting sorry capital expenditure and revenue expenditure right so so there are some point of differences right so let us say point of the point of difference number 1 revenue expenditure is recurring in nature whereas capital expenditure is not recurring in nature so revenue expenditure repeats quite often right so giving salary to employees you have to repeat every time every month every day you may have to give salary to your employees right providing refreshments like tea breakfast to employees so this happens again on a routine basis so this is repetitive in nature this expenses keep coming again and again whereas capital expenditure is not repetitive constructing a building right have you come across any company constructing a building every day uh, you may come across construction companies i am not talking about construction companies a normal company wouldn't buy uh, building every day right as an asset so it may happen probably once in 30 years 40 years right so it's not repetitive in nature so the point here is that we need capital budgeting for only for capital expenditure because when i'm giving a cup of coffee to my employee i don't have to do an evaluation as to what is the benefit received by giving that cup of coffee how much profit i'm going to earn by giving a cup of coffee to an employee and what is the risk factor of giving that cup of coffee right so this assessment of risk and return in other words capital budgeting is not necessary for revenue expenditure it is essential for capital expenditure right so feature of capital budgeting capital budgeting is done only in case of capital expenditure and not in case of revenue expenditure second second important difference is that capital budgeting involves commitment of funds and this is not a short term commitment this is a long term commitment right so in case if you are constructing a new uh, campus for your employees after the uh, completion gets over obviously this campus which is in the form of a uh, building right so the benefit can be derived for a very long term so that means this fund what you have invested in construction of that building 
is a long term commitment it is not for short term right the benefits should be derived for a very long period of time right so that's a point here and obviously all long term investment decisions are associated with risk and uncertainty right so the other name of risk itself is called uncertainty so you're not sure after investing such a huge amount of money whether you would be able to derive profits or not so that is quite difficult to do the assessment right couple of years back tata motors uh, took an important decision of buying uh, jaguar land rover and range uh, rover which is also known as tata jlr so if if you have to do an assessment today whether the investment decision of tata in jlr was worth or not probably you might end up getting a negative result you might end up concluding saying that it was not that worthy right by taking into account all the financial data we have to come to a conclusion whether the investment was worth or not right so now can tata say oh no this was risky we should have not done the answer is you can't say that you can't go back right so you can't go back that is also one of the uh, highlight of capital budgeting that capital budgeting decisions are irreversible after taking such a important decision you can't say okay no the decision was wrong let me uh, roll back so there's no rolling back in case of capital budgeting right reliance industries limited after investing heavily in jio in case if jio is not giving the desired profits they can't say oh sorry we can't uh, continue to invest in this so let us a uh, roll back so that's not possible so capital budgeting decisions are irreversible and there is one more point here which says that capital budgeting decisions are strategic and expensive so what do you mean by uh, strategic so what is a strategy a uh, strategy means certain action plans that would help an organization to achieve superior performance right so when we say superior performance here yeah, superior performance of course the end result of superior performance is profits but there are other dimensions of superior performance superior performance can also be a higher market share right so these decisions would help company to achieve strategic goals one of the strategic goal is to achieve market share to become market leader to become a global leader to venture into a new market to venture into international operations right cost cutting all these are examples of strategic decisions so if you want to take up a strategic decision right you have to invest heavily right without without investing lot of money you you can't take a uh, long term strategic decisions right so automation whether to go for automation or whether to continue with uh, labor right whether to have labor intensive uh, factory or whether to have an automation based factory right so if you want to go with automation again you have to invest huge amount of money but that automation may help you to achieve better results you may have zero errors you may increase your production right because human beings do errors they consume a lot of time whereas automation all these problems can be solved so this can be a strategic decision right so this strategic decisions may help you to be better placed uh, in comparison with your competitors right so capital budgeting decisions basically are uh, aim towards achieving strategic goals and generally they are very very expensive since they are very expensive that's the reason they are associated with risk and uncertainty and in order to identify this risk and uncertainty we have to undertake capital budgeting so these are some of the important features of capital budgeting now what are the types of capital expenditure proposals so by now you should be in a position to understand what is capital budgeting and what is capital expenditure right so what are the uh, important features of capital expenditure feature number 1 capital expenditure gives long term benefits feature number 2 capital expenditure is non recurring in nature third capital expenditure involves huge amount of investment fourth this is from the perspective of accounting that all capital expenditure all capital expenditures are recorded in balance sheet whereas revenue expenditures are recorded in income statement 
So by focusing on these four points, I think you would be in a position to identify what a capital expenditure is and what a revenue expenditure is. So what are the types of capital expenditure is what we are about to discuss. And before we could discuss, let me repeat that capital budgeting is required only for capital expenditure proposals. Capital budgeting is not required for revenue expenditure. So the first form of capital expenditure is expansion. So if you have to define expansion in one word, what would that be? Or maybe in a form of a sentence, how do you define expansion? So expansion should result in increased sales. The end result of expansion is to improvise on your sales. So how can you improvise on your sales? One of the strategies, expansion, right? So what happens in expansion? Basically, you're adding on more outlets or you're expanding your production capacity to achieve higher sales, right? So these are some of the uh, tactics generally companies used to go for uh, expansion. Right, uh, I'm quite sure you guys would have come across a brand uh, called Kanti Sweets, which is very popular in Bangalore. Right, couple of probably a decade back, they were having only two outlets, two or three outlets max in Bangalore. But now, if you look at the kind of uh, expansion what they have gone through, every area in Bangalore has their outlet. So this is a very good example of expansion. Expansion also requires huge amount of money because every time you come up with a new store, you have to spend a lot of money. And what about PVR? How many uh, screens they had when they started? And how many screens they have now? They are India's largest uh, uh, multiplex chain, right? They have highest number of screens in India. They are the market leaders. So one of the objective why a company undertakes expansion is also to achieve... Uh, market higher market share the, the more sales you generate there are better chances that you might become a market leader so in order to expand again you need huge amount of funds so this is the first type of capital expenditure proposal the second one is called diversification now diversification and expansion what is the difference in case of diversification you're venturing into a new type of business which is not connected with your existing business or businesses. This is a completely new category of business which you are not doing at the moment. So this concept is called diversification. Some of the big companies' names, you whatever you remember, whatever is stored in your brain, they are very good examples of diversified companies, right? Reliance is a very good example of a diversified company. Reliance Industries Limited, which is owned by Mukesh Ambani, has diversified uh, line of businesses, right? They are into telecommunication, right? So, Geo is a part of telecommunication. And they are also into uh, retail, right? Reliance Fresh, Reliance Trends, Lions, Mart, all these are part of Reliance Retail. So, they are not into one cat one line of business but in fact they are into different lines of business so this is a very good example of diversification